Hello? Hello, hello. Which one am I? Uh, the you're bottom? The, you're the bottom. Okay. Which isn't true in our relationship, but it's true for right now. <laughs> Are we recording? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can cut that if you want. <laughs> no, no. Okay. That's accurate. <laughs> Uh, welcome to Rachel Uncensored, the only place on the internet you can find an uncensored version of here. I am here today with my girls. I have my gorgeous girlfriend and her little tiny dog, who's now also, I'm going to say she's mine as well, a little bit. Yeah, I think you've earned that position at this I, point. The amount of poop I've picked up, <laughs> food I've fed. You take her out every morning. I do. So I feel like that's, like, that's definitely she's, your... Yeah, she's mine now. <laughs> I got her. Half the ownership of this dog. It took very minimal effort. Uh, say hi, baby. Hi. This her name is Abby. If you didn't know, my name know. is Abby. If you're not watching this, or girlfriend, if you were like a oh an OG, an OG to the this relationship. Well, how long did it, was it? Did it take to release your name? Six months. Um. Yeah, because we didn't think Hawaii. so. Yeah, cause, yeah, that was for my birthday. Yeah. Yeah. So we started dating, and then I slyly let the internet know. And then six months. I but I didn't show your face. Oh no no, we didn't show your face for six months. But then we didn't no, release your really? name for like a year. Oh like, yeah yeah yeah. Because yeah. when we decided to go to Europe, you're like that's exactly right. Hey, people can know my name. Wow, we, you were my girlfriend for over a year. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. And then like I remember when was that? I I just like came up to you and I was like. Um, I don't want to be just girlfriend anymore. I want to be a person. <laughs> I was like, all right. I was doing it for you. Like at first it was just like, hey, let's like take it easy. No, it was a good buffer in the beginning. I think I need, we both needed that. I needed that. The internet's a lot. But yeah, it's when we decided to go to Europe and I was going to vlog every single yeah. day while it was just you and I in Europe. Yeah. It was getting hard to hold your name, especially when we brought in all of your friends and they all had to have nicknames. It just got to be too much work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lazy. So anyway. Um, Abby has been on the podcast before. Uh, you guys love her as you should, because I love her as well. She's perfect. Um, oh, stop. No. And but keep going. <laughs> been two years. I haven't stopped overly complimenting you. Oh my gosh, you. it has been two years. Yeah. It does I, not feel like it's been two years. It feels like it's been. Just because with me, it's just bliss. It's, it feels like a lifetime and not enough time all at the same time. Let's keep going. I was, okay. I was playing with your dog's eyeball and then now you grab my hand. All right, we've done many a podcast about us, and today we want to focus on you guys. So uh, I asked you guys to ask us for advice. I did put the disclaimer, we don't know the perfect answer to tell you how to come out to your homophobic parents. I feel like that's always the advice people ask for. We don't know. Something that yeah. intense, there is no one answer or one size fits all. So I can't help you with that, especially since my experience coming out was so e easy. It was kind of like the perfect way to do it where no one cared. And everyone was like, yeah, that makes sense. So we're going to try and focus on other questions. These are just random things. Some are intense. Some aren't. Oh, have you seen this? Hold on. It, the tortilla fold. Sorry. I was screenshotting like things. cheeseburger? Yeah. You, you fold it with the... Like a crunch wrap. Yeah, I guess. Oh, like that. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that before. Okay. Not that one, but I've seen the uh, other ones where they do it like a Chick-fil-A one. Yeah. I'm doing that for Tuesday's video. Mm. Anyway. Here are your questions slash needs for advice. Does scissoring even work? <laughs> yes. I mean, depends on the person, but, yeah, but I would say substantially so. I think you said this the other day. You're like, some people who don't know anything about lesbians just think like the first time you have sex, you just straight up scissor. I think that's what most straight men think. I think that's what they fantasize about. However, I think that's, they, that's all we can do in their minds. Yeah, they have no idea. Because foreplay doesn't exist in their no mind. No foreplay. Do not use a vibrator. Oh, my gosh. That's what men think. They think right. it's an evil thing that's going to overpower and take over their position in the world. Yeah, you need to use it as a friend, not a foe. I feel like we've had this conversation we on have. the podcast before. Anyways, moving on to that. <laughs> Scissoring does work if you do it right. And, and that's the type of stimulation that you like. Yeah, both partners, like, no, you guys, some people don't like it. I've heard people say they don't really like it because there's, you're not, you're kind of like not around the person's face. Yeah. So like, there's not much of like an intimacy connection as much. Like, yes. You can't really kiss and stuff, but. Yeah, you're far away. It feels really good. 
So it does work if you if you're into that. Yeah. But that's not the go to for like every time a lesbian has sex or two women have sex that the scissoring is not is not the go to move. No, I think that takes a little bit of uh, getting to know someone because it's not like a very attractive. No, looking. it's very weird looking. It's not an attractive looking position. That's a lights off position in lights my opinion. Off, been been, you know, sleeping together for a little bit. Try well, something new, sort of. So one person's got to be a little flexible, I think. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I, I stretch? <laughs> All right. Um, my girlfriend is moving in after coming out to conservative parents. Advice on merging lives. Oh. You're going to have to compromise. And I, I, th- I think. Wait, what do they mean by merging lives? Like, like they're, they're mo- their girlfriend is moving in. Like, I think this is the first time she's living with someone. Okay. And she's like, my girlfriend's moving in. How would we seamlessly go about this? Right. I think if they're moving into your space, it is no longer your space. You have to treat it as like a shared space. Yeah. And I, I, I will stand by, follow the cleaning rules of the cleanest person in the house. Oh, that's good. I, yeah. I've never had a, I never struggled with like, cleaning situations because i feel like i'm a pretty clean person yeah i followed your lead and i yeah <laughs> and it went pretty seamlessly didn't it i typically gravitate towards people that aren't slobs well she doesn't know the true me <laughs> you're not a slob <laughs> i'm not a slob but i definitely leave stuff out you're like chaotically organized yes thank you where you things are don't look very organized to the naked eye yes but in your brain it's very organized like and also you have me i feel like i'm I ha- I remember where certain things are. I remember where your stuff is, and you remember where my stuff is. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I've heard, babe, do you know where my so-and-so, oh. whatever it is? And I'm like, over there. Or I go, do you know where I found it? I, like, yeah. I, I have a thing where I don't mind asking for help ever. So before actually looking, I'll ask other people before I look where it is. <laughs> and then it just, I'm while I'm looking, and I find it immediately. But yeah, advice for moving in. I think um, definitely just, it's no longer your space it is a shared space immediately. So don't be like, well, that's not how I do it. You can like, so if someone's putting the dishes in the dishwasher a different way than you, don't tell them they're wrong immediately. Yeah, we've had things like that. Where it's like, oh, us. yeah, you're like, why do you do this? And it's like, oh, because of this. And you're like, oh, that makes sense. It's really important not to make someone feel stupid. Correct. And they're, yeah, if that's, you, you can't have that be your intention of making them feel like your way is right and their way is wrong. There are multiple ways to do pretty much everything in life. So just because yeah. someone's not doing it your way doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just not how you would do it. And there's like so many things when you when you start living with someone that you don't realize can be done a different way. And like Yes. Like how you fold towels. You fold sweatshirts like no one I've ever seen before. <laughs> and now that's how I fold sweatshirts. Or like even the way you fold your socks. A ball them up. There's just all kinds of little Well, I know I I put mine all in a little ball. And you just put yours inside the other one. Like, oh, yeah. Flat. I just go. I just fold it in so yeah. that they're combined. I like to roll mine all up into like a little ball. And yours are just like tucked inside the other like a slipper. And for neither a sock. is wrong. No. Yeah, I know. But I, yeah. I, I had no idea that there could be very <laughs> specific ways to, to do that. And she's not going to get upset with me if that's how I do it. If I'm doing the laundry and I'm not going to get upset with her if she's doing the laundry. If it gets done, it gets done. So it doesn't matter. So are we answering your question at all? Yeah, Probably we are. Not. What's they ask for advice? Compromise. Compromise. But just said. know that just because someone does something differently doesn't mean it's wrong. Right. Um, don't make them feel stupid. If you're trying to figure out why they do it, just ask instead of, you know, like tell them it's wrong. Your space is a shared space. It's mm-hmm. no longer yours. And follow the lead of the cleanest person. That's a really good one. I never thought of that. Yeah, that's I what really I've like always that. done. And it, it works out well. I, but what if you think you're really clean and... The, uh, if the other person you is genuinely think you're really clean, but you're not. Well, <laughs> no, if the other person's like, hey, if the other person's kind of hinting that you're not as clean, you're not as clean. Right. right you right, could right, be. Right. A cl- I am a clean person. Like, yeah, my space is usually like it's a chaotic mess. It's never gross. That's the thing. I no. don't have dirty dishes out. I don't like things aren't gross. I think there's, there's a messy. difference between disorganized and yes. like m- messy. Yes. Like dirty. Yeah. Um, oh, also, if the, you have space in your house to have separate spaces, I highly suggest it. Oh, like having your own, like your own individual office. space. You have your yeah. shared space, like the bedroom, mm-hmm. living room, the yeah. kitchen, 
but then you have your own like you have your office i have my meditation room yes Um, yeah i think that's really important and depending on the type of people you are if you're both need to be cling clung to each other at all times cool if one of you needs a little more space than the other find out when to give that space and like don't necessarily make them ask for it like Mm. we have special we have not specials we have separate times in the mornings we have separate times Mm -hmm. and that works yeah i think it works really well for yeah yeah and so we have our own we have our own spaces in the house because we spend so much time together and because you work from home and i'm home then we're both home all the time so we have to find out ways to have not our own be together individual <laughs> moment of the day times. Yeah. yeah. But you, yeah. I mean, when you're working, you're, you're here in the office and yeah. stuff. So, so compromise, that's pretty much it. And then follow the lead of someone that is better. <laughs> and patience, a lot of patience, open communication, patience with yourself, patience with the other, for the other person. Mm-hmm. Um, just yeah. knowing that you're not going to have all the answers right away. And if something's uncomfortable, like, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of people that get are hard on them, on themselves about things. Oh, yeah. And maybe they don't want to speak up about it. So I think it's just important to just have grace for yourself and compromise. Yeah. And therapy. And compromise. Therapy. Oh, therapy is really good. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. We're a huge proponent for therapy. Um. Okay. And this next person, I don't know if they're for real or not. But I'm not going to judge you if you are being for real. I just thought maybe we should just say this for all who are wondering. What slash where is the clit? Uh, <laughs> that's not what I was expecting at all. <laughs> um, like anatomically? Oh. Is, no, wait, is that the word? Ana- anatomic? Ana- anaton- you could say any word right now and I would believe you that you were correct. <laughs> Anatomy? An a. Anatomy? Yeah, but like, yeah. Anatomy, but when you're saying it like. Anatomically. Anatom- anatomically, I think is the word. I'm going to go with that. I don't know words. That's like scientifically. Like posterior, inferior, superior. Posterior? Yeah, like uh, posterior is below. You, if you're asking me, <laughs> you're wrong. I took one <laughs> anatomy course in high school. And I did have to cheat my way through it. So I did not take an anatomy course ever. My it mom signed me out me- of health. It was a lot of memorization of the body. I don't know. That. Anyways, the clit. Taurus. The clitoris. That I know that word. <laughs> that is sounds like a dinosaur. Oh, it does. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Sorry. I <laughs> just think you have it screaming when you touch it wrong. <laughs> okay. Uh the clit is a magic little button that is on the outside of what, what did you call it? the vagina? The, the top. <laughs> the top outside. So Right above your pee hole. Above your pee hole. So it's be- it's like. And it has a little hood. Like right on top of it. And got. Open it up. <laughs> but it's really. No. Well. Which, yeah. Depends on the person because it. I read somewhere. And I believe this is true. Was it. Did you actually just watch a TikTok video? Are you playing an Emily or did you actually read it? I think I read it. <gasps> Maybe on BuzzFeed. Which was well, accurate. No. You're an um, educated woman. I think it was like Uberfax, which we we trust Uberfax. I trust Uberfax. I um, like that's them. That's an Instagram page. But the the clitoris has more nerve endings in it than a penis. Yes. I think everyone knows that. Yeah. That's why the penis can like rub up against stuff and the clit's hidden. Right, right, it's right. It's tucked away like a little pot of gold. Yeah. Super sensitive. So I I, I would ask the person before you decide to just... Oh, always ask if how the pressure they want. Yeah. yeah. And like... Do you, but gentle rough there's different things you need to know everybody is different um but yeah it's like a little button like if you go down there and you like start spreading stuff apart it's the first little button you'll find yeah i feel like the most important like if you're curious the best way to figure it out is to explore on yourself I completely ex- get I've a mirror a t- yes get a mirror get one of those little hand mirrors and just put it right here and i would get yeah just Spread it around. See what's up. It's not nothing bad's gonna happen also, if you, you do that. you can just Google things. Like, don't maybe not pictures. I don't know what's no, what will happen you, there. But yeah. you can Google like you might get scarred. The names of things, so you're aware of. Oh, that is this, and this is that. And listen, there's nothing. <sighs> nothing's that gonna just go reminded wrong. me of something that's really frustrating to me. What? Tell me. Well, sex education, first of all, Duh. in public schools. Yes, but how? Like in sex ed, I'm I was homeschooled, so I didn't get any of this, but. What I've heard is in sex ed, which is what in like middle school, 
Um, I don't know. I I have no idea. I was homeschooled as well, babe. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, in I high school, went to, I went to high school. Uh, well, I think they do it in like middle school, like what, seventh what grade. Middle, oh, that's junior high to me. Junior high. Junior I went high? to a private Christian school for seventh grade. So they I don't did teach not you learn. anything about the vagina. No, they don't teach you anything about proper, like proper sex, safe sex, STIs. No, they don't teach you any of this. They don't teach you anything about birth control. No. They teach you how to put a condom on a penis. And they teach you what a penis is and that you should stay away from it. And yeah, I think that's should. all bullshit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, for me, yeah, and for you. But for a yeah, lot of other no. people, no. The abstinence. They, they very much preach abstinence instead of no one is actually, like, there's very few teens and or older that are going to abstain from sex. So why don't we just teach them the correct they way? They don't even, but they don't even... They don't even educate abstinence, or what did you say? Promote abstinence. Yeah. They, it's just an, a lack of knowledge. Yeah. Like, people who want to not have sex before marriage will not, or like, will wait to have whatever. They want to yeah. wait. They want to practice abstinence. They will do that. However, you have to know the other alternative and ed- be educated in that. And instead, they just completely. I think the lack of education is why people, you know, make mistakes and, yeah. and are I, doing dangerous things. I, in, I remember in high school, it wasn't until the end of the senior year that anyone in my friend group knew anything about the clit. And I, my, most of my friends were having sex sophomore or junior year. And no one mentioned the clit. Well, every guy I knew was just talking about like fingering, like, like going inside and trying to find right. the G spot in there. No Good one, luck. Good, yeah. You should start with the basics before you start reaching for the well, stars. That's there, buddy. what they thought the basics were. They had no idea that the clit was the gold. That no one knew what the clit was. And I so, think that's, that's that's also has something to do with sex, uh, sex education and porn. Porn. Yeah, because the girls weren't watching porn. The boys were. And so, like, yeah, the, not because yeah, I don't know. That's just what it was. Yeah. And no one because girls aren't allowed to masturbate. Well, they are. But yes, that's what the thing was, is like, I I don't know. And so I just like, as I got older, I was like, wow, everyone was having sex and no one knew what they were doing. Yeah. No one knew what they were doing. And like, no wonder the girls like didn't really like it. They weren't getting anything from it. Correct. It was just for the boys. And then as the boys got older, they're like, wait, you actually want me to do something that I have to get you off too. This is ridiculous. I have to make you feel good. This doesn't seem right. This yeah. is too much work. Because they grew up their teenage lives not having to do anything. This is all generalization, by the way. Oh, for sure. Obviously, we're not saying that all men and all women are like this. <laughs> I feel like I have to set a disclaimer for those of you out there that get very sensitive about the topic. <sighs> this is Rachel Uncensored. Oh, yeah. This, people don't expect much from me here. <laughs> all right. But before we move on to the next piece of advice, let's check to see if we have a sponsor for today. Sponsor, sponsor. This episode is brought to you by ZocDoc. Have you ever been stressing about a health problem that's going on with you and you don't quite want to go to the doctor or know how to even start that process? So you end up resorting to just asking your friends their uneducated opinions on what's going on with your body. Or you go to the internet and you stumble down a TikTok rabbit hole full of questionable advice from self-proclaimed professionals. There are better ways to get the answers you want. ZocDoc helps you find expert doctors and medical professionals that specialize in the care you need and deliver the type of experience you want. On ZocDoc, you'll find quality doctors who focus on you, listen to you, prioritize your care, and you won't feel rushed or brushed off by them. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. When you're not feeling your best and just trying to hold it together, finding great care shouldn't take up the last of your energy. Book an appointment with just a few taps on their app. It couldn't be simpler. Go to ZocDoc dot com slash rachel and download the zoc doc app for free then find and book a top rated doctor today many are available within 24 hours that's z-o-c-d-o-c dot com slash rachel zoc doc dot com slash rachel all right this is not sex can you hear when i swallow uh probably but emily cuts it out sorry um she doesn't care. I'm She's not swallowing a lot. She doesn't get turned off by those things. I'm nervous. Oh. Uh, don't be nervous, baby. Doing great. I'm not nervous. I'm just I my you know public speak. This feels like public speaking to me. No one's no one's here. It's just you, me, Snoop, and the little one. 
These are oh dogs and of the thousands day. Thousands of others. We have dogs watching. of the day. We have little one, and we have Snoop over there. Blaze is roaming Noop. free in the house. Noopish. Hi Noop. You want to make a cameo? No, he wants to lay in that sunbeam. You see how I position that dog bed right in the sunbeam? That's that was very kind of you. I love my dogs. All right. <laughs> Um, I would do the same for you, babe, if you love a sunbeam. Thank you. I do love a sunbeam every once in a while. Our house doesn't do a lot of sunbeams. No. We have a lot of light. Yes. But we don't have a lot of sunlight coming in, if that makes sense. Like beams of light. We have, like, it is bright. Yeah. But there's no beams happening. So we have a lot of windows and doors. And Next house. I want a better view. I want a swimming pool and a hot tub. And I need some beams of light coming in. Can you like, write all that down? Seven things. Can you go find it for me? I hold, held up this many fingers and said seven. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right. Speaking of moving. Uh, wow. What a segue. I'm amazing. How do you know when you're you ready are. to. <laughs> what? I said you are. Oh, thank you. Okay. How do you know when you're ready to move out? When do you make the leap? Um, I moved out right after high school when I started college. But I guess if you're not good, because that's usually just like kind of what it is. But if you're. If you're not going to college, genuinely, I would say as soon as possible. Uh, yeah, I would say don't rush it. I, for me, I, I believe that when opportunities arise, that is the, that is the, uh, that's the moment to kind of make a decision. Um, maybe, maybe not everyone has opportunities, but... I say find, me, like, make opportunities. Yeah, I mean... I wouldn't say a specific age. I feel like that's putting people in boxes and judging. But no, but I'm you saying could be at, you could be 18 and be ready to move out. You could be 28 and be ready to move out. I'd say depending if, on the circumstances. Yeah. If you are able bodied and have a good job, I feel like 28 is if you're still living with your parents at 28, unless you're like taking care of them or something. But like they're good. You're good. You physically are totally able to live on your own. I think you're hindering yourself if oh, you're yeah. still living with your parents at 28. Yeah, there's like a fear there of like being on your own. Because I mean, yeah. that, that is a realistic fear. That's a valid fear. But we all have to deal with that fear. That's like a part of life. Yeah. So I think you learn. And, and if, you, if you just don't want to have to pay rent. That. <laughs> um you gotta get the fuck out i very much think that living on your own will teach you more about life and will grow you as a human like yeah so you're i feel like you're stunting your growth so if you're like it's out of high school you're not going to college you you have a job and you're just saving up money for a few years that's fine and right. you're still going and out you have a doing plan. stuff yeah you have like a, a trajectory for you know i i think that's really mature actually to be like you know i'm gonna save up some money yeah. I'm going to take a little bit of time, not feel pressured by society or friends or family. I'm just yeah. going to like do what I know is best for me. Yeah. That's a really mature move. Yeah. But you could also move out too early because you're like, you know, with you have no money and I don't know. I feel like if you have a friend who's looking for a roommate, I just feel like go for it. I know some people who like they don't, they're their parent. They live with like just like one parent or whatever. And like they're just best friends and the parent doesn't care. And it's like you have your own special, whatever. But I feel like you got to get out to grow. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many different circumstances where, um, you know, maybe it doesn't always apply, but definitely if you have like the ability, if you have the ability to, and you're just, you're your own worst enemy, you're holding yourself back. Then just make the that, leap. Just, just do it. Literally list, just do it. And if like, listen, go get a six month lease somewhere or go move in with a friend. It's a year of your life. If you hate it, you move back. Yeah. Yeah. Also, you always, as long as you have like a, a still healthy relationship with whoever you were living with, like your parents or whoever, yeah. whatever family member you were living with before that you can, that's kind of like your safety net, go out and explore. And if you really hate or something bad happens, you always have that to go back to if you need. That's why I don't, when people, I don't get when people won't make those, I don't even think it's a leap. It's just a step. And if it doesn't work, step back. It's not that hard. Like I, yeah. the only thing that's going to get hurt is your ego so you're risking like oh, a little bruise on your ego if it doesn't work out and that's it like you might as well try because you could benefit so much more yeah i i think that like in my life every big decision i've ever made mm -hmm. was a good one yeah i don't regret any big decision i've ever made and 
I don't think, I think that really goes to show just life in general is really that's how it is yeah yeah I don't really regret any big decision either little yeah. decisions I've regretted but actually I don't really because that got me here and I'm fine no regrets no regrets we have no regrets in this life no so how do you know when you're ready you don't really know you just do it if I you think can. if you're asking the question then you are yeah then you you're are ready. just whoever you are you're ready just know that Abby and Rachel are saying do it do it and if it doesn't work out it doesn't work it's out. gonna be great though it's gonna be great for you I yeah. promise yeah all right this person says my mom is cheating on my dad and I don't know what to do tell him oh I have so many questions tell him how do you know that tell him <laughs> will always be at my advice you can write a letter to them you can or your dad right it's the dad, the dad doesn't know yeah the dad doesn't know yeah and honestly write a you letter you can write a letter to them him uh but yeah ultimately you should tell your dad i said yeah I'll or ask I'll, another family member or something sorry i keep no i you. was gonna say no you're fine you're just thinking about it um i always say like people i always tell them like don't let the person live in the lie um unless like you think your dad is going to like kill your mother <laughs> like oh yeah that's why I, I have like so many questions because i feel like i can't just answer i mean obviously the answer is tell they them. need to know however you could also i know people that are in these types of sticky situations will go like this person could go to their mom and be like if you don't tell dad i will i will then you give them the chance to come clean to yeah Oh, yeah. I would always tell. I've told, Maybe that first. I've told my friends. I've told all my friends. If I find out you're cheating, I will give you a chance to tell your significant other or else I will tell them. And I have no problem doing that. But if you're scared of getting stuck in the middle, anonymously tell them. I would go. I would go talk to your mom first. Yeah. This. Yes. And then, yeah. What Rachel said. If they don't come clean, you clean it for them. Because you also like, it does, you do not want to be in the middle of your parents. Like that sounds very tumultuous. Parents aren't they're just human we i feel like as you're raised as a kid you're like whatever your parents say is truth and gold and they're the smartest and as you get older you realize they don't know what they're doing either no one knows what they're doing yeah <laughs> like your parents are supposed to not like put your kids they're not supposed to put kids in the middle of stuff and they're not supposed to use them as pawns and divorce and whatnot but they do that because they're just human and if they haven't figured out their brain yet or their mental health yet they're not gonna it's not gonna magically be fixed when dealing with their kids i think that's one of the biggest epiphanies in life as you get older is realizing that your parents that realization yeah. that your parents don't have it all together and yeah. they don't have all the answers and they're just normal regular people who that's that can be really shocking to a lot of people yeah yeah and so when people are like respect the elderly i'm like they got to give me something to respect first. <laughs> like, they yeah. have to, I'm not going to be rude to them, but just because someone is older doesn't mean they have more answers. Age does not constitute knowledge. Wisdom. Correct. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Next one. How do you know if you have a crush on somebody? If you're constantly thinking about you them, you feel it in your private parts. <laughs> <laughs> You want to kiss them. You know you have a crush on them when you want to feel wanna. what their lips feel like on yours. Oh, shit. Yeah. I, I was just going to be like, if you're just like constantly thinking. Because sexual attraction, I think, is different than the crush. I think they, they can go hand in hand. But I think like you could be like extremely sexually attracted to someone but not have a crush on them. Yeah, I guess. Like if you're emotionally. Not sexually. Like, like you'd be like, that person's hot as fuck. But you can hate them as a human. And I don't think you have a crush on them. I just think you are appreciating that they're hot as fuck. But yeah. also, I think, or you could just really want to be friends with someone and not find them sexually attractive. But I think, yeah, if they make your privates tingle, if you want to know what they taste like, and you can't stop thinking about them. Yeah. And they like, Maybe the like thought of them like, kind of makes you smile. You want to like hold their hand. Yeah. I think that the thought of them I went makes very you aggressive immediately, but I guess I'm, I'm, now I'm backtracking a little bit because I know <laughs> there are people out there that identify as like asexual. And yeah, all across the board. So I think if you're constantly thinking about them, the thought of them makes you smile. And then if you're not asexual and you get a little a little butterflies when you when you think about. Oh, what yeah. They butterflies would, are good. Yeah. I think your body kind of tells you. Yeah. Your body will tell you. Yeah. The end. The end. Not There's right. Your answer. There you go. <laughs> you got a crush on me? Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> someone asked, do I need to shave? The answer is no. No. Um, I read that. I, actually, I just read earlier today on my, I think it was on Uber Facts. Yeah. 99% of women shave, but wait, I, I can bring it up. Do you have your phone? It was, it was just saying just how like shitty. And we look at Uber Facts. It, yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, oh, were you looking at? It was in the, it's in the US though. Only the US. Was that the, I think like BuzzFeed put out something that was like, wait, no, orgasm can clear a stuffy nose. That was yesterday's. There's nothing for today. I think you're looking at BuzzFeed as they posted it. Oh, they posted a thing that was like uh things that women are judged for but don't don't think twice about men i don't want one of them was shaving oh yeah maybe it was that i would say you knew what you want it is your body um if you're a dude and you're like i would like you to give me head and she's like i cannot handle how much pubic hair you have it gets Uh, in the way oh my gosh i would suggest if you want head to to trim that that's nice. And don't so, make her feel bad. No. And vice versa. If, a, if you've got a full bush as a woman and you're like, hey, go down to me. And they're like, I, the, the hair is literally just tickling my nose the whole time. Trim it down if you want head. But you don't have to do just because like it is your body. You do not have to shave at all. I used to shave my arms and now I don't. And nothing has changed in my life. No. <laughs> I don't. It doesn't matter. I genuinely don't know what. Like. It's still an underlying internalized understanding as women that we are perceived as sexier if we are shaven. Yeah. That is why I still do it. Like I and I I'm extremely sexually attracted to you and I've seen you without armpit hair and with full grown armpit hair. It did absolutely nothing changed for me. Uh, I think you're probably fibbing a little bit. I'm not. (laughs) I'm just your armpits. Do not determine how sexy I think you are. Right. No, I know. But like, it's, do you know what I'm saying though? Like that is just how society has, it's so deeply ingrained in us that like, and, and not even just like sexiness is, and it's also perceived as like cleanliness. Yeah. I guess it is perceived as clean. Well, yeah. Cause I like, guess I'm the same with like, why are we doing something that takes more time? There's literally no reason to do that except for what we what we think other people will think of us yeah i like the feeling of when i'm shaved like my legs i know i do like this i do like the smooth i like feeling. the feeling of smooth yeah i've thought about that but, as men it was as, with men though too like i didn't i don't like how scruffy men are yeah i don't like chest hair i hate chest hair i hate I like it. chest hair so like i don't like when you can see it popping out of their t shirt i don't like that either you can shave or not shave it doesn't matter I personally, I do perceive it as cleanliness, but I think that's because the guys I've seen that are super hairy also don't, they just don't have good hygiene either. Like they don't take, it does, for me, it looks like someone's not taking care of themselves. Mm. But I, just, I think that's yeah. why when you're. I'm just not attracted to men. That's why. I said. Yes. But that's why I was thinking like maybe that when you have armpit hair, like it doesn't bug me because I know you're cleanly. You still smell fantastic whether you have armpit hair or not. So maybe yeah. like I'm just not seeing it. I don't, I don't know. know. You do not have to shave. And if someone doesn't want to get with you because you're not shaved, then don't get with them. And that's it. I mean, if you are asking if you should or not, it sounds like you don't want to. Then don't do it. Which means then just don't and experiment with that a little bit. Maybe yeah. don't shave just your legs. Maybe don't shave just your armpits. Whatever you shave, <sighs> don't do one of them and see how you feel about it. Or Yeah. I hope you have a lot of friends that are supportive. Yeah. If they try to make you feel dumb make them feel dumb no <laughs> don't do that but that's, that's not I, good advice that's, it's not no it's like uh if you shave out your armpits and your friends are like why are ew gross that is just you should get new friends if someone yes. says that to you well yes but also just be like i don't know i just be like why do you feel like i need to shave why are my armpits any of your business you just kind of put it back on them don't defend yourself put it back on them is what i was meaning to say yeah 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 um all right before we move on to the next question Let's check to see if we have another sponsor for today. Sponsor, sponsor. Pros, pros is our sponsor for today. There's no one size fits all solution when it comes to hair care. And that's because your hair and your hair goals are completely unique. And they may change throughout your life. 
Like recently, I realized my hair has been getting a little bit more frizzy. And thanks to my personalized pros routine, I can honestly say I now have never been more in love with my hair. Pros makes custom hair care that's effective because it's personal. Using natural ingredients with proven results, Pros customizes every product in your routine from shampoo to supplements. First, Pros starts by asking about your hair goals. And then their in-depth consultation also asks about you as a person. Then Pros analyzes all of the answers, handpicks clean ingredients to help reach the goals in your life. As a carbon neutral certified B Corp, Pros is an industry leader in clean and responsible beauty. All their ingredients are sustainably sourced, ethically gathered and cruelty free, which is my favorite part. They're also the first custom beauty brand to go carbon neutral, which is huge in our environment today. If you're not 100% positive, Pros is the best hair care you've had. They will take the product back with no questions asked. Pros is the key to achieving all your hair goals this year. Take your free in-depth hair consultation and get 15% off your first order today. Go to pros.com slash RU. That's P-R-O-S-E dot com slash the letter R and the letter U for your free in-depth hair consultation and 15% off. All right. How do you tell your partner you've got a foot fetish? They just tell them. Hmm. I would say hmm. if I was if you've been in you know, this relationship for a while and they have no idea just be like next time like any sexual conversation comes up or whatever I hope you guys have an open communication just in life but just be like hey just so you know I'm kind of into foot stuff if you ever want to try that with me yeah but no I, pressure if you don't like just kind of just put it out there a little bit yeah I, I would say don't if you have like any sort of fetishes tell your person like pretty early on oh yeah don't try and hide it because one, you're admitting to that, like you feel guilty about whatever you are into, and uh, by uh, not saying it early on, because you're ashamed of like how they're gonna take it, or like you think you need to hide it. And also, it's just not fair to your partner to not know certain things about you. Yeah, that not might make or break the relationship, but might have changed. Like those are just things you should talk about early on. Like on your first date, you don't have to say that. Yeah, but not on your first date, but like let me see them feet, girl. If, yeah, <laughs> if you're like, <laughs> if you've been dating for a couple weeks or a couple months and you feel like this is really going well and you weren't completely scared off, I, I don't think those, there are just certain things you should not bring up on first dates. And that maybe is, I mean, you can if you want, if you really just want to go straight out there. Um, But yeah. Oh, is this person asking because they do? How do you tell your partner you've got a foot fetish? I okay, think so they probably have a foot they fetish. Do, yeah. Listen, there's I don't think there's anything wrong with a, a like a fetish where everyone is consenting and it's not harming anybody. Like if you got a knee fetish, get some. Like just, what like, does that mean? Or I'm just saying like be, so I'm just saying like that probably is be, a thing. I'm sure it is. Ever like everything's a thing at some point. But I think with things like that, like there's no harm in it and people I think it's just become this like joke that doesn't need to be a joke i don't right. know emily and i've talked a lot about foot fetishes because we have never the statistics this is why we talk about it it's apparently like one in three or one in six people have a foot fetish but neither of us have ever met someone with one and we're like therefore people are keeping it quiet they're because they're probably ashamed. not yeah they're probably not being honest so when we're a group of 10 people sometimes her and i look at each other and we're like who do you think has it <laughs> it's not me <laughs> I wouldn't be ashamed to admit that, but yeah. I, it's not me. I mean, I don't mind feet at all. I don't either, but I like to sometimes hold Rachel's toes. <laughs> I have big gaps like, like holding hands. Um, feet never have grossed me out. I'll massage people's feet, like not everyone, anyone's feet, but like my person's feet. But it doesn't, it doesn't like, it, there's no sexual attraction towards. But if there was, it wouldn't be a bad thing. It doesn't matter. Like to me, you it's know. like boobs or butts. Yeah. Why I, did we make? Why guess, did we make those you don't sexual? Say, yeah. Why? Well, yeah, I don't know. I why, don't know. How did we make a butt sexual? Um, you poop out of it. It has a hole. And is I, that why? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it's something that you can put something else into. Oh. I don't have. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a. Anyway, I, I love butts, but I love boobs the, the, the most. Vice. You love boobs the most? I love boobs the most. I think I'm pretty split, but I I think I might be more butts. Oh, my gosh. Well, that works out, I guess. 
Yeah. Actually, I don't have a butt, though. You do. I love it so much. Oh, you, you're crazy. You have fantastic boobs. I see. I the reason I'm like scared to say like I'm more into butts yeah, is because I don't. Are fantastic. I don't want you to think that I am not fully appreciating your boobs. Oh no, no, no. I don't think that. Okay, that's thank not what God. I think. That's not what I think at all. No. All right, because I think as in general is how I'm thinking of it. Okay. Boobs and yes. butts generally, not specifically yours. Actually, I don't know. I'm trying to think like what I would try and check out the most but i really don't know i think i'm pretty split i'm pretty like even boobs all the way man <laughs> which is weird because i don't have that many boobs i think my butt is better than my boobs but it doesn't matter the size of them it doesn't no it could be what matters teeny tiny they're just all beautiful i love you <laughs> i just want to <laughs> suck on them <laughs> all right <laughs> we're moving on um, every girl I talk to ends up ghosting me. I don't know why. Tips. Um, I'm going to say if every single girl ends up ghosting you, you need to take a look inward. How many girls are we talking? Like you're saying every like 10 or like three. I know when you're getting ghosted twice could feel like so much. Yeah, that's but true. maybe that those were just two flukes. Um, I think ghosting has a lot more to do with the people that are ghosting you. That's what I'm saying. If it's ever, like, if it's been like 20 girls, that's uh, that, that's the then thing. You got to take a I look need, at yourself. I need to know in order to answer that accurately. It would depend on whether or not it's you or them. Depends on how many there have been. I think what Rachel yes. said. So, but ghosting typically is being done because the person that ghosts is flaky, uh, t- talking talk. to someone yeah. else or not over their ex. Yeah, that's a big one. Um. Or they're sure about their sexuality or they're just immature and they don't know how to say like, hey, I'm not feeling it or hey, something else came, came up or whatever. They just like are very immature and can't sp- communicate. Yeah. But because like ghosting is the easiest way to get out of something without. Having I've to- definitely done it a couple of times. Babe. Yeah. 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 Not to you, obviously. G- clearly. I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> sorry to those out there that I've ghosted. I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know you you might actually watch this we're not whatever sure. i'm kind of glad you did it now we're here they might have tried to persuade there you there weren't not. many so if you think you're one you're probably not <laughs> <laughs> anyway but if you have 10 20 girls who just straight straight up ghost you um i'm gonna say you need to figure out what you're doing are you not continuing the conversation do you think you're like a nice person but really you're being a dick um there's a lot of people who I've seen lately that don't hold the conversation. They just do like one word replies and then the person doesn't reply back because they're like, you're not giving me anything to work with. And then they think they've gotten ghosted because mm-hmm. they're like, well, you didn't reply back. They're like, you didn't give me anything to reply to. Yeah. You didn't seem engaged in the conversation. So are you keeping the conversation engaged? Are you being a creep? I just, I just had a flashback of a person I ghosted. I want to tell the story real quick, very briefly, because I Police! feel like. I no, 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 hear. no. I was just going to say. Um. It also might, like, I was thinking about first dates. I think after a first date, you could be ghosted based on how the first date went. Oh, God, the And I pressure. went on a date with this girl who just complained about her ex-boyfriend that she still lived with the entire time. What? No. I immediately, yeah. no. I could not get out of that sushi restaurant fast enough. <laughs> Is that the girl that didn't like I had sushi? Dr- no. No. You went, I thought you went on a date with a girl to a sushi place and she didn't like sushi. And you're like, I don't know what we're doing I dated here. someone who didn't like sushi. I don't think I took them to get sushi. Did I? I don't know. Okay, but then I had to drive this girl home. Because she didn't have a car? Or did you pick I her like, up? I think she got dropped off by her ex-boyfriend. Stop! <laughs> this girl should not be on a date. I don't know. I don't know what was going on. It was really weird. Um, and so I took her home. And then she was like, I, I can't wait to like hang out again. Like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll drive to you next time. And I was like. All right, so um, it was you know the sushi was great and good fish, good fish. The conversation was just riveting. Um, and you know, yeah, we'll see. That girl was fresh, and I breakup. never texted her back. I never texted her again. I, I think was like, that is warranted. See, if you're that bad, so don't. Uh, what I what I was gonna say after that was don't talk about your ex the no. whole time. Don't complain. And don't tell them that you live with them still, if that's the case. Because no. that's just not going to Yes. Go One thing well. my friends are, have been talking about, uh, 
dating apps and whatnot. And one thing I will never stress more is don't be super negative when first meeting someone. Yes. Like, oh my gosh. Yes. Don't talk about the things you don't like. Don't talk about what you're not looking for. Don't complain about other relationships, your past. Don't complain. Be very positive. Yeah, I think talk about what you want out of life, what you want out of a person and not because and be like, well, I want someone who's really like, you know, uh, spontaneous because my ex is or like or don't because- bring up your ex at all on the first date, yeah. even the second date. Just talk nobody about- wants to know. You probably shouldn't be going on a date anyways if you want to bring up your ex. Yes. If you're trying to bring up your ex in any conversation, you you're not over them. yet. No, then, then just, you should be just dating. relax for like a couple more weeks. You'll be fine. Yes. Um, yes. Just be positive. That's what I've always talked about. What you love, what you're excited about in life. Don't be a negative person. Don't no be one, a negative Nancy. No one is attracted to that. Well, there are some and you don't want to be with that type of person. No shade on Nancy's out there. It's just, just saying. <sighs> Sorry, Nancy. Um, how do I get her to like me? Here's my piece of advice. Eat her if- out. <laughs> I was going to say, if you're actively trying to convince someone to like you, you probably shouldn't be with that person <laughs> or eat her out. <laughs> uh, um, no, I've always said if someone doesn't want to be with me, I'm never going to try to convince them to be with me. Right. Wait, I'm not so going to change who I am. How do you, what do you mean get them to like you? Have like they already if, like, do they not know that you exist? They, Is this like in a group of friends where like they don't really, if they're you, not into you? If, they're, if you've been friend zoned, you're better off being their friend. Or if you don't want to be their friend, that's fine. Then don't be their friend. But like convincing someone to be in a romantic relationship with you, I don't think ever really works out. Yeah. Is this like someone that you're trying to date or just someone that you... To me, that sounds like you've been trying to date this person. They don't want to date you. No, oh, I initially took it as there's this girl. Oh, like how do, that like well, then how I've do you met or like in a group of friends and like I want to like. Oh, for me, I want to like impress them. Oh, I would just ask them out. These questions are too vague. I'm sorry, babe. We need, Here. No, it's not you. Okay. And it's not them. <laughs> Next time, give us really this is why the are you are you the asshole are are they really good because it's a whole story yeah that's There's a true. lot of detail I have a couple of those we could read but I feel like we can't good, give good advice if it's well, a one sentence <laughs> I feel like we're giving a generic advice for people generalized with a gen, gen, yeah generalized advice. so like if you have been friends with someone and you can't seem like you've been trying to pursue them and they're just like not for it then they're not for it yeah yeah you cannot S- stop it you can't convince someone to like no. you if you just met someone or like you know like a bartender that you see every once in a while and you're like how do i get them to like me ask them out just yeah. ask them out and see if it works out confidence is everything not it cockiness is. no i didn't say cockiness no i said i stay humble confidence <laughs> uh yes so just straight up be like hey uh i like you would you like to go on a date with me or just be like hey you want to get a drink sometime that's it yeah. Just don't even be like, hey, I would like to take you on a date. Just like, hey, you want to go grab some food? And see how it goes. It doesn't need to be a big thing. Um, but don't try and convince someone to like you who doesn't like you. That's just never I mean, you're not going to, it's not going to work. No. So you'll just be heartbroken in the end anyways and, and really bitter. Yes. That's all it is. Um, this person wants to know how to kiss. How would you explain verbally how to kiss? I've always been a really good kisser, so I don't know. I never had to learn. I just did it. I don't think I ever had to learn either. I don't think most people do. Like, it's kind of it's just comes natural. naturally. It's yeah. just like sex. Like there, are, there are like things you can do. I don't know. Like as you do it more, you kind of get better at or like learn things. But like the initial just kissing should just like sex. It should just happen. It can just happen. I never, I never really like think about it. How to kiss? How yeah, to, that's why I was like how. How would you explain it? No one ever explained it to me. I just did it. Like make out? I don't know. Or like kiss, like kiss the lips. Perk them. I mean, that's just a peck. All you got to do is touch your lips to their lips. But don't go in Remember tongue when they first. called it French kissing? Why People still say that still? French okay. kissing? I'm all Frencher. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? French kissing. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, with yeah. tongue. Yeah. Yeah. I think people, people don't just, say that anymore. I think people just call it making out now. Yeah. I don't know. Tonguing. Don't go tongue first. Let's get. No, 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 no. Don't go tongue first. Your teeth shouldn't be involved. 
Unless Mochi. you're doing a soft bottom lip bite, but that's don't do too much of that. That's just like once. That's in a, a session. very specific. To bite someone's lip really hard. No, I said a soft. Is, I know. I'm, oh, okay. I'm just thinking about how. <laughs> Don't b- bite my those, lip off. Those people are very specific. Oh, yes. There. Um, Start off gentle. And as the passion rises, then kind of. Oh, I don't want to say the word aggression rises. Oh, no, it's just more like. Yeah. What's what's less aggressive of a word for aggression? Um passionate i would i use the word in initiate initiation initiation i would say start off start off gentle like if you're just easing into it if you're just trying to start off slow smooth gentle and then as the intensity rises yeah the the passion of the kiss should rise as well mm-hmm. does that make sense that oh yeah it made sense to me. Okay. I, was, I was just falling through with that yeah. i was like you just thinking about it yeah <laughs> I was like uh-huh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, here are a little more in-depth one. People DM'd me some stuff. Fantastic. Um, all right. Hi. I'm in my early 20s, female, finishing my degree. I have never been on a date or have been asked out or anything. Wait, how old are they? 20. Okay. They said early 20s. Um, I've only, quote unquote, liked two people, both male, but I'm unsure of everything. Additionally, I am extremely introverted, school-orientated, orient- orientated okay um and very school oriented oriented yep and very risk averse any advice on how to put myself out there um do you oh uh, you might i don't want to say that they're asexual but if they like are in their early 20s and they haven't really re- ever liked somebody you said two people she said quote unquote liked yeah does that mean because but she if you're trying you're to- unsure of things like because you said they were both men. Yeah. But are you're you saying unsure you're unsure that maybe you're not attracted to men and you're attracted to women or you're attracted to both or you're not attracted to either. I think therapy. I think you need to learn more about yourself. I think that that's I think you need to figure out exactly like what you want. I wonder if the people that actually write these will watch this and know that we're talking about their questions well, i hope so i always wonder that i don't know but i would say before you try and bring in someone else figure out what type of person you're trying to bring in i feel like therapy i feel like yeah explore a little bit read some articles watch some videos talk to a therapist talking to friends i mean like having a community of people that know you and love you mm. i would say can be helpful yeah because they can give you maybe some insight on things about yourself that maybe you don't even realize yeah. from an outside's perspective because it's hard when you're when it's your brain to not be kerfluffled yeah by your own thoughts and emotions so Talk to some people yeah hopefully you have like friends and i mean you're in school so I, w- I would assume you've made friends maybe not but make some friends join a class join a club find an online community of people get it's out there okay a to bit. be single no you don't have to yeah. like it doesn't matter I've, I've known people who were single until they were like 36 and then met someone and then got married and had a kid. Wow. <laughs> like, sometimes it just takes time. Yeah. But they did have to go to therapy and put themselves out there to get, make that happen. You can't sit in your room and yeah, I know expect introversion, Prince Charming to come through. Introversion is a real thing. Again, something I, I just don't relate personally to feeling super introverted. I'm like that in between. You're an outgoing Extra- introvert. You, I'm an extroverted introvert. Yeah, you're an outgoing introvert. You have to charge by yourself, but yeah, I'm very you comfortable. Love going out. Yeah, I'm very comfortable putting myself out there. So it's hard to give advice. Yeah, because I feel like it's gonna sound really, um, like, oh, just do it. Un- insensitive for yeah. me to be like, oh, just do it. But like, I understand that a lot of people struggle with introvert. Not, 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 not that introversion is a struggle, but like, it is hard to be social sometimes when you're more introverted than extroverted. Yeah. Um, and that can that can definitely hold you back with meeting people. So yeah, um, find another introvert, hang out with them. <laughs> just like knock on doors, <laughs> which is the last thing That's you want to do. Super extroverted thing to do. <laughs> just knock on doors. Excuse me, I'm an introvert. That's why I said join like online, ch- like go to find an online community. I've seen a lot of introverted people because um, it's easier to talk when there's a screen between you, and they build relationships with people, and then they eventually meet. And they know each other already. Mm-hmm. And like that is a totally fine way to meet people. There's no right or wrong way to make a friend. Um, yeah. Also. So if it's easier to do that than do that. 
I, I'm just thinking about um, the one gal that we met in at Wild Rose. Um, I was going to say not promoting drinking, but <laughs> if you have a little bit of social anxiety, um, I feel like the bar scene can be a really safe place to be i'm gonna say even if you're not drinking just know everyone else is drunk yeah you can go and not even drink like you don't have to go and get wasted you don't have to drink at all if you don't feel comfortable with that but that atmosphere does allow people are a little bit more you know loose and and comfortable with themselves and you can start conversations with the bartenders with the person sitting next to you if Even, someone is playing pool like yeah and drunk people will just talk to you because they they don't care and then you'll get some like you'll be it's easier to talk to a drunk person so i've always thought that we were at yeah we were at um wild rose wild rose and we met up with like uh someone who knew who rachel was and she was telling us that this was her first time ever going out to a bar and she had fun and she had she, a freaking blast she was dancing she was tearing it up on the dance floor her name is Sarah. Yeah. She was Hi, Sarah. It. Um, yeah. What a sweetheart. I really was like inspired by her to just like get out of her comfort zone. Yeah, she just she straight up had never been in a bar before and just She drove sat there up. by herself until we got there for like an hour, I think she yeah, said. Yeah, and I think she had fun. She grabbed a beer, she was just, you know, hanging out and I think so be be Sarah. <laughs> be Sarah. It's Everyone hard. go be Sarah. It's not as uncomfortable as you think it is. Like, what's just, the worst you can literally happen? go sit there by yourself and drink a soda water or take a shot and, and just like people watch yeah literally always think like what is the worst that can happen if it's a bruised ego just do it like the what is the worst that can I, happen i would say if you are will if you're gonna go out with a with a positive attitude and you're willing to put yourself out there you will end up talking to someone. Yeah. Like it actually be very difficult for you to sit alone by yourself. Yeah. If you if you're like in that mindset. Yeah. If you're if you're going into it like closed off and negative. Yeah. Then yeah, it's not going to work out, but no. Yeah. Anyways. All right, last one. Here's a long one. It gives explanation, okay? So keep, okay. Okay. Good. How do I, an 18-year-old lesbian, get over a crush on my childhood best friend of 10 years, who is a bisexual 19-year-old female? After she politely rejected me. Context. Oh my gosh. Context. We've hooked up multiple times, both before and after I admitted my feelings to her. She was my first kiss and my first time. She is also the first person I've ever knowingly had a crush on. When I admitted feelings for her, she was extremely kind about it. And after taking it over and thinking about it for a while, she told me she didn't want to risk the friendship, which I sort of understood. So now the friendship has continued as normal. And she recently has gotten a boyfriend and talks about him all the time, which really, really hurts. I don't want to lose her as a friend because she's one of my few friends and I, that I have. And I genuinely love our friendship, but I don't know what to do because I really wish she would be with me. You need to. OK, one. Y'all should not be hooking up, especially after you've admitted feelings. Yeah, I don't know. That part right there was confusing to me. Like she's you, using you it. explained your feelings and she's like, no, nah, thanks. She, but let's fuck. kindly. Well, kindly. Yeah. But then there should have been a very clear boundary then from then point that point on on your end and on her end to be like, I can't do that to myself. And she should like understand that she can't be doing that to you either. Yeah. If she's Um, like, I don't want to risk the friendship by dating, but then is still willing to fuck you. Right. I think. I think you guys need well, to take hard. a break they, from your friendship for a moment. They were friends for a while. I could see how things could get confusing because yes. maybe this friend likes liked the attention. Yeah. But didn't want the full commitment. And that's yeah. why she continued to kind of like allow the hookups to still happen is because she kind of wanted that validation and like knowing that her friend really liked her. Yeah. Um, boosts your ego, but it's not healthy. No. Honestly, you're probably not going to get over her until you find someone else. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think you should take a break from the friendship just for a little bit because it's really hard to heal or get over someone when they are in your face every day. I would take just My like dog a, is barking. It's because she's Emily low is, growling. Emily is outside with. Sorry if you guys with didn't hear Daisy. That. Um, she's going to the backyard. She's fine. You're fine. So I you think, need to take some time. Yes. And especially because if she has a boyfriend, that's just not going to feel no. good at all. And, and that she keeps continually talking about. And like to you means that she doesn't care 
genuinely respect your feelings no. enough to know that you don't give a fuck. <laughs> I yeah, and like that's yeah. I would say take a break for a little bit, find and not be like, I just need some space to get over you because I really do enjoy our friendship. Um, so I just need to step back and like heal a little bit. And if she loves you and she is a kind person, she'll respect that. And then hopefully you can get over her and then you can be friends again and have a normal friendship. But I really don't think you're just going to be able to hang out with her and hear talk about her boyfriend every day and then no, eventually you get won't, over her. You'll never get over it. You'll be stuck in that like, you'll be stuck in those feelings for you a really long time. Um, you, um, really, you really do need to, some space. Um, but that's, that's always my advice, getting over anybody, any breakup, anything at all, space. Yeah. Space and time. And maybe like in the future, if she continues to stay with this guy, which I know you don't want to think about, but if you can think about the future a little bit further, you'll probably end up meeting someone that you really, really end up liking. And maybe yeah. all of you guys can be friends and that can be like a healthy sort of with boundaries put up. Yes. That can be. Because you you're, yeah, you're definitely for you. You're not going to find someone. I don't think uh, like if you started dating someone tomorrow, she'd be cool with your best friend being someone that you're in love with and have hooked up with multiple times. Like, well, yeah, if you decided to tell them all that uh, stuff, you should tell them the truth that. Right. Yeah. But anyway, that's it. I think that's all the time. That was a deep one. It was. I like those ones. You can give give us more of those ones. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll do that next time. I like it, too. All right. I love you guys, baby. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. You're gorgeous. You're gorgeous. I like your lips, (gasps) your boobs and your butt. Oh, Oh my gosh. (laughs) I feel so good. (laughs) Thank you guys for listening. If you have any other advice or if you have any other things you need advice on, please comment them below or DM them to me on Instagram. Please subscribe, follow, and you're wonderful people. I love you. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Rachel Uncensored, the only place on the internet where you can find the uncensored version of me, Rachel Ballinger. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, subscribe, or follow, or do whatever this platform tells you to do so that you can get notified every time I post a new episode. Love ya!